Hop, hop, hop. Whoa, that was amazing. We're out on another bike ride. I've got Mike hey. over my left shoulder and we've got a guest rider today. Dave over my right shoulder, but I suspect he's on that side now. Where are you? He's over there. He's over here. And we're gonna go for a, a bike ride into the Lake District. So what do we say? Let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> so go on, Dave. What? My catchphrase. What's your catchphrase? My catchphrase is, I'm a cyclist no, and I'm from Cheshire. Posh Cheshire. It's high tide. We're following the estuary for the River Kent. And we've got a wicked tailwind. So Dave's from Cheshire. And I said to him today, we'll be heading out towards Milnthorpe and that area where it's flat like Cheshire. And he's thinking, well, I need a break from the flatlands. But around here, you can't go wrong. You can work a route anywhere into the Lake District and into the higher hills. Well, we're managing to avoid all the showers. Um, it's rained a lot recently. We're 19 miles into the ride. And on the left is the Lyth Valley or the Lyth Valley. Got Brixteer behind us. Brixteer. Just look how green it is, though. I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines, and welcome to my channel. And so, on today's ride, we're back up in the Lake District, and yes, we've got a guest rider out with us, and he's called Dave. And I bumped into him on a ride way back in June last year when I was cycling around the Yorkshire Dales on my way to Kirby Lonsdale. And I heard someone shout out, I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines. So we stopped and had a chat, and the rest is history. And so today, me and Mike have invited Dave out on this ride. So let's have a look at the map, and you can see where we are, which is in the northwest of England. And if you look in more detail, you can see where we set off today, from the small town of Carnforth, which is in Lancashire, as we followed the coast towards Silverdale, Arnside, and eventually we made our way towards Brixton, which is where we are right now. And with a small climb over the tops, we descended into Bowness on Windermere before a spot of lunch at Freshers Cafe at Ambleside. And we cycled 34 miles at this point. So let's get back to the ride, where the weather's about to turn, and it looks like there's rain on the air. And we've cycled 21 miles so far. And we're near a place called Crossthwaite. Right, well, we've been caught out by some weather. Looking pretty grim over here. We'll crack on. So this is Windermere, busy, busy. Busy, busy. Full of tourists. Busy, busy. And so up to this point, there wasn't much filming done. So we left Windermere, we headed north on the A591, which took us all the way to Ambleside and onto Rothay Road, which is where the cafe is. Well, we had some good progress there, um, 33 miles, just approaching Ambleside. It's always going to get busy here. And so this was Ambleside, and we arrived at Freshers Cafe. And to my amazement, Mike and Dave were talking about the fine art of eating scones, and not even a mention of Beatrix Potter. So you put the cream on first, oh, sorry, the jam on first, yeah, because yeah. that's yeah, yeah. the... He got that's it right the most, first time then. That's the thickest. The cream is... It's not as thick. So that You're happens. loving this, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. Yeah. So, yeah. if you put the if you put the the cream on first, when you put the jam on, it just pushes the the cream out. Yeah. Right? All right. It's a lot of nonsense. It's cream on first. No black puddings. No black puddings. No black puddings. All day Coffee. breakfast quiche. Cheshire quiche. No, I couldn't eat that. Sausage and egg. And if you're new to the channel, if they're available, me and Mike, we love a black pudding. Well, let's get back to the scone debate. So, that's the proper way. No, I didn't. No, no, that's no, a proper that way. Proper way yeah. That's jam, cream on top. That's jam, and that's cream beneath. No, that's the... No, 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 no. no. You've got it completely wrong, okay? Yeah. Mike, that's the right way. Butter, proper way. jam, cream. Just you guys are a bit weird, weird. Yeah. Mm. Well, nice little bit of bike talk and scone talk. We're not sure what route we're going to do back yet. What do you think, Mike? Coniston? Yeah. Or yeah. other side of Windermere? I'll get a taxi. Taxi for Dave. <laughs> Might need one after all, that. So it was time to hit the road. So next we're headed towards Clappersgate, over the River Brothay, 
before he took on the climb of Hawkshead Hill, which is the B6286. So let's um, crack on with the ride. It's always a bit of a slow start after the cafe stop. 38 mile, I can't film that way because Mike's having the nature break. And we've got a couple of old deers around there we've seen on the road as well. That was amazing. 39 miles in, we're on the B5285 and we're on the townhouse climb with Coniston ahead of us. I'm looking at the map, we was actually on Hawkshead Hill climb at over 650 feet above sea level. And it's wet, a lot of leaves on the ground, got to be careful. And so having crested the summit, it was time to take on the descent of Hawkshead Hill with Coniston Water ahead of us. Got Dave on the front, Mike in the middle, and I'm just behind. And to be fair to Dave, he was handling the bike really well on this section. And I definitely call this one a wet lap. Look at all that surface water on the right hand side there. And it's just under two miles long the descent. But more standing water there on the left side, got to go wide. And this is a great descent, so it's got lots of left and rights. And you can carry some really nice pace. Just give the camera a quick wipe there. And like I always say, enjoy your descending, enjoy the speed, but just be mindful of your own limits and the conditions on the day. And if you notice now, we've got some dry lines appearing. I'm actually cutting across the road there just to keep a nice smooth line and the pace does start to pick up. I think at this point we're maxed out at around 38 miles per hour. We've got warning signs there for the road getting a bit steeper and this is where it gets a bit juicy. Oh, we've got a bus as well, the 505 to Windermere. Another right hander, then a left hander. We've got wet lines on the inside. Yeah, we got it. Gravel on the road. And be so careful. You're really relying on the guys ahead to give you instructions and signals. And in the end, we got down in one piece safely. And so in a way, it was the descent of the day and I just loved every moment of it. Well, I made it down that descent. Uh, it's a good one, that. But you have no speed today down there. Just pick good lines and talk to each other. So this is the north side of Coniston. And we're going to take the lovely little B road that goes down the left-hand side of Coniston. So we're following the lake southwards on the left-hand side. Just avoids the busy roads. So when you're on a ride like this, have the crack, have a chat and all that, when you see the view, stop and have a look. Take a picture. Still tracking alongside of Coniston here. A lovely road this. It's windy though. So we've navigated our way, bottom of Coniston. And so we were making our way towards Haverthwaite, but ahead of us we had Lowick Bridge with the River Crake on the right hand side as we were approaching the south end of Coniston Water. And after this we'll be heading towards Spark Bridge and places such as Booth on these lovely country lanes. And here we are at 49 miles and again in places these little kickers, they really do make the legs burn. And again credit to Dave because he really was putting some efforts in there on the front. This is a lovely country lane, 53 miles. I'm moving a few miles further on at 55 miles, with Haverthwaite behind us, and we're making our way to that little place called Kark. So this is the B5278. We've got Dave on the front who's wiggling his elbow about, wanting Mike to come through. Mike's just chuckling away, and I'm at the back thinking, I can get a good shot here. And we were carrying good speed, it was around 24 to 25 miles per hour. And on this clip here, you can see how I can run the chest cam from one perspective, and then I can use the handheld camera to give you a different viewpoint. And it really does come in handy to have two cameras there to capture these moments, whether you're holding the camera or putting it on a wall for a flyby shot. But it's also not safe riding with one hand at these speeds. And it's always nice to look back at summer rides. When it is warm, you're just having a great time cycling through the countryside.
Nearly 60 miles, this is Chirk. No, it's not, it's Kark. You going okay, Dave? Come on, Darren. Time to get some refreshments. How are you finding the ride, Dave? Brilliant. Company's good. Riding, riding's good. Food's good. You haven't been told to say that, have you, either? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grange over sands. Come Grange on. over sands. Let's go. Making steady progress now. Uh, we're on the outskirts of Grange over sands. It's about 63 miles in. It's dried up. That's a good thing. We've got dry lines. Blue skies in places. Definitely in the flatlands now. So we passed through Grange over Sands and then we got on the B5277, which is also called Allithwaite Road. And having cycled round here quite a lot, Hiya. we're getting to know some of these fantastic little back lanes. And this one here is next to the golf course, it's called Meathop Road. It's nice and flat. And with three bikes in the line on this great stretch of road, all you could hear was the tyres. It's a great sound. And so next up, we headed towards the Derby Arms Hotel at Withersland, where we went under the A590 and then got on the Cycle Route 70, stroke 700, where we bumped into quite a large group of leisure cyclists. Hiya. I'm still on the same road, just a bit further down. You've got Whitbarrow Scar on your left, and that is a sight for sore eyes. That's another reason why I keep coming back to this place to ride my bike. So it's just 70 miles in now. You'll know this from watching other videos. We're on a cycle lane tracking the A590. So this is now 75 miles if you look on the map and we've completed the loop taking us pretty much all the way around Windermere and including that cracking little route along Coniston. This really is a place to ride your bike. It's challenging, there's some ups and downs, but oh yeah, what a day out. And so looking ahead, we were going to take on Brigsteer Brow, which was the climb of the day. And so we're 520 feet above sea level. You climb very steeply to get to the top. And we were now back on roads that we originally came in on. Well, this is a peach of a climb. It's called Brigsteer Brow. It's quite steep and we've done 79 miles. Hop, 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 hop. And again, to be fair to Dave, he dug in all the way. Nearly there. By the sounds of it, his chain was sounding a bit dry there after cycling through all them puddles. What a view. And we just navigated a course all the way through that magnificent vista. Well, after a lot of back lanes, left and right. We're not far now from the finish point and we're at Burton in Kendall. Well, God knows where we've been. Well, that was a cracking loop in the Lake District around Windermere and Coniston. And a big thanks there to Dave, who joined me and Mike on this ride. And we really appreciated his company. So, in the end, we cycled 95.5 miles. And as for the elevation, it was just over 6,000 feet of climbing. But if you like these videos, let me know and I'll make some more for you. And thank you for watching. I'm a cyclist and I live in the Pennines. You been buying sweets? No. Yeah, have you got a load of sweets? Come on, show us your sweets. He's got a load, hasn't he? Look at them. You're rattling. You're going to rattle all the way back. <laughs> you, can't, you can't film that, Mike. Does this read on a bike? Uh, yeah, this is read on a bike. Yeah. Beat my hero. <laughs> <Darren>. <laughs> right, I'll try and get that in.